my my most interesting <laughs> this is quite cool oh, well good evening good evening my dear fiends <laughs> welcome to gargoyle manor the monster museum i'm your internet horror host Bobby a monster of monster movie night welcome welcome one and all i was just looking in uh, some of the magazines that we have in the back room in the library and I came across a coloring book for a little vampire child. <laughs> it's so interesting. Nowadays, you know, uh, vampires are seen in quite a different light, as it were. <laughs> and myself, of course, being a quarter vampire, I um, like to keep with my roots, my heritage, so to speak. You know, vampires were not always uh, treated like, well, cartoon characters or cereal box uh, spokespersons or even a Sesame Street count. <laughs> no, no. In fact, vampires were treated quite rudely a very long time ago. Well, you know, nutritional supplements always ranged in, well, somewhat like uh, our goth teenies here that Boris, my dear Boris, mixes up for me every once in a while with the old negative, you know. <laughs> it keeps one, well, in a peak of health. Mmm, that is delicious. It does get me going, you know. <laughs> and tonight's feature film is about vampires, of course, vampires, and I thought it would be appropriate for myself to uh, feel my vampiric ways, so I thought I would, mm, fangs to you all out there, I would pop out the old fangs, <laughs> indeed. I keep them in a jar every so often. <laughs> yes, quite tasty looking you all are out there. Hmm, I might have to visit you tonight. <laughs> Tonight's feature is called Invasion of the Vampires. It's a Hispanic version from our cousins down in the uh, south American ways and Mexico, Mexico and and all the other Hispanic speaking areas. Mm? Well, we have vampires all over the world and we are all related some way or another. So, <laughs> let's get started and let's crank up the old internet horror TV. Well, internet haunted TV. <laughs> trying to rename everything here tonight and see if we can't tune in to Invasion of the Vampires. <laughs>
Cassio, it's Paulino. That's right, Crescencio. He should have gone to the lake. This is frightening. That awful pallid look. It makes a man shudder. Just like the others. He's paler than a dead man. Did he go to the woods? Don't they always? Where they come near the water's edge? Come on now. You saw what occurred, didn't I tell you? Why don't you do as I suggested and stay the night in my village? Tragedy attacks on these moonlit nights at the Hacienda, I swear. They're only superstition. Oh, no, sir. I tell you that some young man dies when full moon is upon us. But that's a coincidence. How does the moon affect the situation? On these nights, the Count Spirit goes to the lake. He lives in hell. Such dark ignorance. Well, I guess it's like you say, sir, but we had better turn around and go back now. You can go return if you like. I'll go on to the haunted Hacienda anyway. With your permission, then, please leave my carriage in town at the Alcalde's house. Don't worry, you'll have it back tonight. for the senior Marquis, Don Gonzalo Guzman de la Selva. At this late hour, sir. I was delayed a little. I've been traveling ten days. My home is in the capital. I wonder where there's a hacienda farther away than this. Let me see. Welcome you to this humble house, Dr. Ulysses Albaran. Thank you, Senor Marquis. My professor was not mistaken when he assured me that I'd be courteously received by Your Excellency. Your professor and I, more than very good friends, are almost like brothers. And in spite of the many long years that have separated us, we still have a great deal of affection for each other. But please sit down, Doctor, in that chair right there. Now tell me, how is my friend Alejandro? Why, he's younger than ever. Life seems to stand still for him. Yes, yes, he always used to say that he created a special elixir to prolong his lifespan. 
Nothing is impossible for such a sage who's realized fabulous experiments, sir. But this trip was motivated by certain fantastic studies that could revolutionize all that is known about the matter. We realize that this beautiful hacienda is the best place to make the experiments that could furnish us with proof. Right here? Yes, Senor Marquis. The professor seems to think that this region around here is ideal. In that case, Doctor, are we going to be seeing Count Cagliostro? No, Senor Marquis. That's impossible just at the moment. That's why he sent me here. You see, sir, I'm his most advanced student in this specialty. I do hope that this is not an indiscretion. But exactly what is the subject that you're studying? I study vampires. Could you please tell me just why your teacher thinks that here... I don't know, sir. But the man has such knowledge. He's wise, the same as his great-grandfather, Jose Balsamo. But I swear that he maintains a certain magical power, and with this he is more astute than other mortals are. I think he must be psychic. That's the only way to explain it. Well, how can I be useful? I'd like to work on this new project in your house. You're welcome here. My house is yours, sir, as long as you deem it necessary. The man can't stay here not one minute longer. Who says he can't stay? I do. When anyone visits this house and is sent by Count Cagliostro, then I'll consider him my friend and my guest. But the Marquis knows that he can't stay a moment longer. It's quite impossible. That's enough, Fraulein Hildegard. I said Dr. Albrand can't stay. And I warn you, Senor Marquis, this is extremely dangerous, you know. But you would like to experience a little danger, wouldn't you? I'm sorry that because of me, uh, you have... Ah, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Fraulein Hildegard is a hard-working woman, faithful and efficient. But at times, she forgets that she's not the master, she's my servant. This is it. What's happening? That's Father Victor and he's calling to that young fellow's soul. Now it's with the devil and he wants it to return. What? Yes, the priest says that the devil is the one that murdered all these boys. And he thinks he can straighten things out through prayer. You confused me, old fellow. Don't you hear good? Well, I don't understand. I must admit it. Now then, please explain. Exactly what deaths are you talking about? And how does Satan figure in this? Well, I'm confused too, sir. Guess I'm ignorant because I don't understand. Why don't you begin asking Senor Maximo? And just who is he? He's the Alcalde here. His boy's the one that died. He's the judge of the law enforcer. Tell the mayor then that I want to talk to him. Right away, sir. Alcalde, sir. It's this way. I'll take you. The alcalde will be here in a moment, sir. Excuse me, please. What can I do for you? Please excuse the interruption at this tragic hour. I'd like to extend my sincere sympathy knowing that your boy was killed tonight. Thank you. But permit me to introduce myself first. Dr. Ulysses Albaran, your servant. I'll not talk to persons that abide in the haunted hacienda, young man. I might be able to help you, although you can't accept that. Oh, why should I need your services? My son's been killed. There are things worse than death, Mayor. No, nothing's worse in my mind than never seeing my son again. Listen, would you want your son to return as a living human to all effects and purposes, but quite dead in reality, with a mission to create havoc and panic in other humans' hearts? 
Are you ridiculing me and my son, making light of my tears and agony? You're about to learn just what I do to all charlatans. You're not looking at any charlatan. I graduated as a doctor. I came here to begin work on a long experiment, sir. And I'm sure that it is closely related to these murders that have caused all this tragedy to your people. But I can't begin alone. I need your aid in this undertaking. You all can help me. Do you know how it began in the first place, Alcalde? One lonely moonlit night, the Count and Countess went to take a ride around midnight. A while later, the horses returned to the hacienda terrified. And then the next day, they ran across the corpse of the Countess lying there on the shores of the dead man's lake. And the Count just disappeared completely, like the earth had swallowed him. You know those cases. Who's the Count you're referring to, Alcalde? It is Count Frankenhausen. Frankenhausen. And the haunted hacienda that had been a blessing to the folks around here has turned into a curse that plagues us all. You see, on nights like tonight, the Count's gentle lady returns to this region. She goes from the hacienda through the trees toward Dead Man's Lake, and there she disappears beneath the cold waters. The young men in my small village go crazy. One usually escapes to follow her down to the lakeside. And the next day they find his body in the same spot that the Countess was killed. And you know what makes me shudder? Their drained pallid complexion that no other dead body has. It happened to my son. There are so many important facts in all that you've told me. But now I think we may soon clear up these mysterious deaths. Well, I'm sure now that the deaths aren't mysterious, Doctor. I know before I made fun of Father Victor when he said that the devil killed them. Now that I've seen death close to me, I tell you that Satan is the one who robs their spirits when they're out there. For example, other parents start to do desperate things. They begin to stray away from God. Those murders are the work of Satan. Those murders are the work of the people that were killed. This has nothing to do with hell or the devil either. This gentleman here might start to think that we're all idiots in this little town, my friend. I did not ask you to interrupt the conversation, Don Efren. Don't be rude. It concerns me also, Don Maximo. It concerns me also. Since I'm the doctor in this beggarly town, I can't allow any person to start to doubt my efficiency. Permit me to introduce myself, young man. Efren Lopez. I'm a doctor. Or a physicist, as some stupid morons call me because they're so ignorant that they can't tell the difference. This place is just a mud hole. There's no civilization. That's just a word here. And it won't change because it's still under the rule of a stagnant family, sir. Dr. Ulysses Alvaran, I'm honored. Say, that's perfect. <laughs> then we are colleagues. I'm afraid that's not the case. I'm sorry, you see, I studied alchemy in the occult sciences, not medicine. Don Efren's no doctor. He's, he's only a healer. I'm a doctor. And although I didn't go through school, I've had many long years of practice, and in that way I obtained knowledge and facts that many scientists haven't got. I agree with you, sir. Upon my word, that is wonderful. I know how rapidly you'll understand when I explain it. Only you can explain it later on, Don Efron. Are you against hearing his opinion? It's only that I've heard it several times. Not only that, he convinced me on one occasion. Excuse me, please. The Alcalde is going to turn into a madman any day now. He's just too whimsical and emotional. Little drink, Doctor? No, I'm not a drinker. Thank you. Well, you don't know what you're missing. This is excellent brandy. Go on, Don Efren. <sighs> well, then, in this town, all the people are going completely crazy. So, you see, that explains our general ailment. <laughs> and it's much less complicated reasoning than the mystic theorizing of Don Victor the priest here. Well? I accept your reasoning, but how can this be related to the many deaths that apparently occur on nights like tonight? It's very simple, Doctor. All those men have heart attacks. We could say that the Count's death produced the situation. The way I see it, this thing is collective, sir. A general dread that is all concentrated in one individual. And this single man starts to imagine that her spirit, her fantastic spirit, is out there in the shadows. He is attracted 
as the sirens attracted Ulysses until all the emotion and the effort drained the lad's strength. And the result, a heart attack. Your theory is very personal. Only up to now I don't know much, and obviously I can't judge efficiently. On a later occasion, I'd be delighted to chat with you, Doctor. Many thanks for your explanation. I like you, and I respect you, sir. You were kind to... <laughs> well, mm, almost spilled my brew. <laughs> Hello, my fiends. Hello. How are you, dears, today? Hmm? Keeping the museum all nice and... Oh, there's... Excuse me. Hold my brew here a second. There's a nice little spider on you. Oh, how sweet. Tell you what, you make some more... Uh, webs over there. Thank you very much. Oh, well, well, hello, hello, and uh, just thought I'd take a little break here with my new mug of brew. Uh, oh, isn't it nice? My dear, dear, wonderful Melissa had this made for me. You know, it says horror host and monster movie night with my little pog on it of depicting my little face and, well, it's not so little, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'm so glad to have it and to be able to swirl around a little bit of a uh, witch's brew and take a little time off, you know, and, and and mingle around with the fiends and be a regular, you know, just a regular old monster Joe, you know, and, and shoot the breeze and see who all we've, well, you know, dug up or put in the grave. <laughs> anyway, I'm hoping you're enjoying the show. Hmm? And uh, there's plenty more. There's plenty more. And, and uh, of course, you know, you're welcome to pull up a mug of Witch's Brew or or Gostini's or anything that, uh, well, you know, that's, that's to your taste. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the to the film and uh, and I'll get back to the museum and and see if we can't get things continually running smoothly with the webs and the dust and everything. Right, my dears? Right, my fiends? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go back to it. Mmm. 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 That is delicious, and I love that mug. Mmm. <laughs> We hereby Senior Count Siegfried von Frankenhausen was united in matrimony with Senorita Eugenie Guzman de la Selva, who was heir to the Marquis' estates. No, I'm sorry, there is nothing useful here. Well, then, right here I register the child's birth. The girl is called Brunhilda. Mm -hmm. Named Brunhilde by the will of her father, Count Siegfried of Frankenhausen. This is no help at all. Then look here. This is a long list. 
I've registered their deaths right here. Por la misteriosa enfermedad. Llevo un registro aparte. Y los cadáveres también... They're not lying near the other bodies in the cemetery. Or you might say, it's a special section where I laid them. Are you trying to say that they're not buried? I certainly not. They'll get their burial when I can be totally sure that Satan and his aides didn't have anything to do with their deaths. Why, who can tell? They might stay there in that section until doomsday. There are 23 here. Including the young countess who heads the list. In that case, sir, you know nothing about the situation then? Nothing about this Count Frankenhausen? I don't. No one does. You're saying the Marquis granted his daughter's hand to a man that was only claiming royalty? He didn't investigate this Frankenhausen? He did not. The Marquis is now paying the consequence for this. Since the Count disappeared that lonely night and his poor daughter died, he's been closed up in the Hacienda. And no one has visited him there either. Not in many months. Well, I... I forgot you. But, uh, the Count's daughter, Brunhilde? Mm, looks like she disappeared as well. There are some that say she followed her father, since she adored him so. She must have followed the scoundrel right down to Hades, where they were taken by Satan. Could be that they wanted to go there. <laughs> you don't put any credence in these strange stories, do you? Why not? The old Marquis used to go to church, and now he denies God. And as for Count Frankenhausen, nothing is strange because he's a heretic. Now tell me, have you ever seen the coat of arms of Count Frankenhausen? Never. Not even when I entered the Hacienda, when they still wanted me there. He didn't wear it upon his shirts, nor did I see it in the places where all the nobles do wear it. You know, you know that surprised me too, because it's certainly unusual. Should I confirm my suspicions? It's not strange at all. A man who wants to hide his origin has secrets. The coat of arms related to Frankenhausen is notable. And once you have seen it, you never can forget it. The whole setting is in black like the night. Also, there's a German shield in silver, and upon that, a Gothic F in a red color, which represents death to the firstborn of each generation. There's a crown there, too. Sitting upon that, its long wings extended, totally black and very ugly, a lone vampire. A lone vampire?
I was looking for a book. I uh, couldn't get to sleep. Doctor, didn't you know it is prohibited to enter here? You are abusing my master's hospitality. You are rude and most ungentlemanly, sir. Respect our old customs here. I'm sorry. But I'll apologize tomorrow, don't worry. Please tell me, where's the girl that fainted? She was there an instant ago. I don't know anything about it. There's no one like that around this place. Oh, come now. The young woman was there a moment ago. I repeat, you are wrong. There is no girl in this place. Do you think I'm so stupid? A moment ago, I saw her. There! You're imagining things, Doctor. I think it's better that you return to the capital. I'd hate to see you in any trouble, and if you don't do so, that's exactly what awaits you in these woods. Then I'm crazy. Is that your insinuation? No, I insinuated nothing. Release me. You are not to return here, and remember this warning. You should know that the Marquis is very easily angered when his house guests try to meddle in his business in defiance of his orders. Let's hope Father Victor doesn't learn I resorted to the sacrilege. You're helping humanity. There's nothing to lament. Just the same, I posted a man back there. I don't want anyone to find us. seen facial features so much alike. What's that? She looks like the twin of a girl I saw last night at the Marquis. She's wearing the same clothes. You saw her spirit at his house. That explains it. Although it appears that it was her spirit, that's just not logical. That's part of the mystery that I'd like to unravel. There it is. See where he bit her? This confirms all the stories. And Count Frankenhausen is a vampire also. A vampire? I thought I heard you say a vampire, sir. Exactly. A vampire that wants blood. He's a killer. He commands all the others whose corpses appear to be harmless. But in reality, they are dangerous the way he is. Because those corpses are vampires. Are you trying to say, Doctor, that my son has been... I'm afraid so, Alcaldi. I saw the marks on his neck. Your boy's a dead vampire for now, sir. I'm convinced that he's immobilized. He's commanded by his master who... who has them all in a cataleptic trance, waiting to receive orders to leave their coffins. To constitute a danger worse than death itself. Could you tell us, sir, just when... just when they're going to do that? Yes, I can tell you. At the moment that he dies, the instant that Count Frankenhausen is captured and his heart is pierced by a wooden stake. That means we're in terrible danger. At Dennis Florida? Nothing can happen to him as long as he keeps that torch in his hand. All vampires run from all kinds of fire, their worst enemy.
Another man killed by the vampire. The moon's not full tonight. Doesn't matter. It's quite clear that we angered Count Frankenhausen. Opening his wife's tomb, he came to watch us. Let's get the beast and destroy him. Yes, that's right. He has to be destroyed or he'll come and destroy us. Because now he's really furious. If things are getting that bad, I look for a safe place. You could go and hide anywhere you wanted to and he'd get you there. He not only plans to attack us, the townspeople are in danger just the way we are. All humanity will die sooner or later if we fail now. Doctor, you told me the other night that you were a specialist in this. So we'll all follow you, tell us what's to be done. There's no time to lose. Let's start burning the corpses. Now listen, you know that I lead these people. And I must use emergency measures so that they can't murder any more victims, Father. And I'm ordering you. Now you don't want to see all human beings exposed to this terrible and consuming danger. And the only thing there is that works is to destroy them with fire. If you throw them into the fire, I'll go into the flames and burn myself too. Father, you seem to forget he's my flesh and blood and I'll do as I wish. Don't you dare do anything or I'll excommunicate you. No, Alcalde, don't do it. This would mean war among the townspeople. We'd just be heaping tragedy upon tragedy. I'll think of something to avoid the invasion of the vampires. How long is that going to take, since we can't wait much longer? Give me time, I'll do it. I advise you to hurry, Doctor. Because you are the cause of the whole thing. I ought to punish you. You are risking excommunication, young man. He's the blame, not you, Doctor. I hold you responsible, so your superiors will know all about this if anybody else is killed by that vampire. And I'll wait only until the next full moon, understand? <coughs> Return to town this moment. And if you value your life, don't look behind you. Because if you do so, she'll place you in the most horrible living death that anyone could conceive of. Now go. I told you to go.
interesting film, eh, my fiends? <laughs> well, I thought I would drag out a few vampiric items for tonight's feature. Well, we first, I would like to bring out some of the uh, lesser horrifying uh, features, like, well, the coffins with wonderful little vampires sitting up in them <laughs> that we all got for Halloween. Remember those? Where you would get up and say, I want to suck your blood. I want to suck your blood. <laughs> wonderful little cases. We also, well, we also had nice little hangamabobs that looks like they're getting ready to, well, pounce on you, right? How could you be afraid of such wonderful little things as this? Hmm? <laughs> Even his fangs are not quite sharp enough. <laughs> but, on a more uh, horrifying note, vampires come in all safe shapes and sizes. In fact, the old ancestors of ours, the skulls, as you can see, the points of the fangs of this one here, and not only the top, but the bottom as well, so that they could get a good grip <laughs> and a good bite for when they went out for lunch. <laughs> However, for those who didn't quite wish to go out every night and put the bite on someone, there was the old thing stone that was laying around called the bloodstone. And uh, the legends say that if you do it just right, if a vampire is really thirsty, you can get a drop or two squeezed from the stone of pure blood, of vampire blood, that is. <laughs> eh, not bad. Not bad. I still think I'll stick with my gustinis. <laughs> you know, there are many, many books on vampires, and in fact, a lot of them are called Vampire Hunters Manuals. Mm, I have a few, but I put them up in the uh, library so that, well, actual hunters don't get a hold of them. They don't need to be knowing all our secrets, but this is a nice one here called Vampirology, and it's got the little jewels on it, and it comes in, uh, it comes in all sorts of uh, languages, and plus there's little tidbits here that's like a, um, what do you call that, a, a um, scrapbook. Yes, a scrapbook of vampires. Hmm. Says what legend tells us about vampires. Vampires are vulnerable to the sunlight and fire. They can be destroyed by these and also by a stake through the heart. Hmm. Oh, it's a true or false type thing. So, I'm not going to tell you the answer to those. My gracious, my family would disinherit me. <laughs> but uh, this one even deals with in the beginning of time where vampires existed and still do, just not quite as uh, worldwidely spread as we once were. Unfortunately, there are hunters and there are those, and well, a lot of them went Hollywood on us. <laughs> But anyway, it's a wonderful book. Pick it up if you can, called Vampirology. Plus, vampires, as I said earlier in the show, they are not only just in America, not only just in uh, Europe, but they're in the South American countries as well. The Amazons, uh, Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico even. <laughs> this one's called Forests of the vampire, and it's got our wonderful Vlad Dracul on the front of it. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, interesting myths and folklore about the vampire. I mean, there's even some that's, well, you might quite would believe it. I mean, they're, they're just, they go back millions, well, thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> and really
really should take a look at it. There's one more book, though. This one takes me back to my early days as a vampire kid. It's called The Deluxe Transitive Vampire. Now, before your mind goes into other areas <laughs> that you're not, you're not quite sure of, this is the ultimate handbook of grammar for the innocent, the eager, and the doomed. I've shown this book a few times before along the years, but um, basically... It's, well, it's exactly that. It's a grammar book for monsters of all kinds. Vampires as well, but uh, as well as banshees and ghouls and goblins uh, and all sorts of things. Ah, a past participle. Flabbergasted. She acquiesced to his invitation. Hmm. Astonished. He pumped her arm. Exhausted, she begged him to stop. Overwhelmed, she slouched to the ground. Puzzled, he tickled her ear. Undaunted, she continued to swoon. Embarrassed, he took to his heels. Hmm. Defrosted, she recovered her cool. <laughs> uh, who screeched? Which is my fa fiancé? What happens now? When did I marry? Whose are those shoes? Hmm, interesting. Well, different, isn't it? <laughs> Bet you wished you had have had one of these when you were going to school, eh, my things? <laughs> well, let's get back to tonight's feature, Invasion. Of the vampires. <laughs> Please tell me where the girl's bedroom is in a hurry. Not so fast, Doctor. I'm glad you got here. This man's a moron. He only mumbles. He can't speak, but he's not a moron. Are you saying he has no tongue? Exactly, my dear Doctor. He lost it because he talked too much. Brunhilde, my poor little Brunhilde. I found out her name at last. What happened to her? I'll tell you the whole story later. But I should examine her because someone is trying to murder her. Please come along. The man who finds out too much runs the risk of getting murdered also. There's no exact diagnosis. This is also strange, you know. God help me, Doctor. He must not take her away. I couldn't bear any more sorrow. Come, come, Senor Marquis. You're upset. Please, you shouldn't forget that I'm no doctor. I suppose I was alarmed when the telltale symptoms appeared at first, sir. Her eyes were glassy. She showed a paleness. Pupils dilated. And besides that, she had no pulse, sir. So I suspected a heart attack. Only now she's fine, so I really can't think she's in danger. Doctor, tell me the truth. The information isn't complete yet. I need more facts because I'm missing a link in the chain. It's so confusing. Have faith in me, Senor Marquis. I won't explain anything more now. But don't let it affect you like this. Had she suffered a heart attack the way I thought at the start, I assure you that she would be dead right now. But look. Why is she sleeping? Exactly. Sleeping. But it isn't a normal state. In my opinion, it's a hypnotic sleep. Are you trying to say that she dies? As soon as she wakes up, then I can be sure. If she doesn't recall anything that occurred, then I won't have been mistaken. It's the principal characteristic that aids us in diagnosing these cases. Usually the subject obeys the orders of the person who hypnotized her, although she doesn't recall what she has done. In these cases, I know you can be sure. So try not to worry any longer, sir. Well, who is the infamous dog who tried to? Is usted la persona más... Probably the most obnoxious person that I know. Why are you here? Don't you know that it's time for your medicine, sir? It's to calm me down. My nerves just can't stand anymore. I'll be going up to my room now. Should she awaken later on, I must be told right away. 
If she doesn't, I'll return after I get a little rest. And someone should stay at her side. Well, I can do that. How fortunate that I came in. If you ever meddle in my office again without my orders, I'll give you a caning that you'll not forget. I'll do it as many times as I think is necessary. The Marquis shows no prudence in these things. And you show no respect either. No me importa nada de lo que me diga. He de ayudar a mi señor. Well, a master as well as the house. And must even though in the end I sacrifice that man and more too. My worry is my granddaughter. I didn't say anything until today. I didn't want her to suffer the terrible destiny that awaits her. But my patience and control are not endless, you know. Only mine is infinite. And soon I'll... And right here is the reward I'm going to get. Speak out or you're going to be sorry. Let's see that. Only my master has a right to see this. From this house. Let me see. No, only master Count Frankenhausen. the intrusion, Doctor, but I came to see if you had retired. Then she's awake, is that the reason? Oh, no, it's only that I came to bring a bit of wine up to you, the Marquise said. To drink it before you go to bed, it can tranquilize you. Why, thank you, that'll be all. Oh, no, permit me. What has happened to you, Doctor? Oh, it's nothing, nothing at all. Just some papers I was looking for. I had lost them, uh, you see? Well, then, I'll be back as soon as I call Nacho to help you. No, I can clean it up quite well, uh, but thanks. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, then, sir. Oh, I almost forgot something. Please don't worry and get your rest, Doctor, since Brunhilde won't wake up all night long. Explain that, please. Oh, the same thing happens to her frequently. She's a sleepwalker. A sleepwalker? Don't you remember? You were there one night when she had an attack, sir. I'm sure you remember in the study. But the Marquise is ashamed to let other people know. Only I think he's being silly. Why, yes, of course. It's not Brunhilde's fault. That's my opinion also. But in any case, the Marquise goes right on trying to hide the facts. And that is why he doesn't allow Miss Brunhilde to travel. There is another thing. He has even tried to deny her existence. He would have denied her existence to you had you asked about her when you got here and presented your letter the other night. So she's a sleepwalker. Oh, and I was going to ask you this, that you wouldn't say a word about our little talk to the Marquis. I told you last night that before I could finish the job, there were facts that I needed. Yes? I obtained the data. From the gracious Fraulein Hildegard. You mean, uh, how could she help you? When I retired a few hours ago, she went up to the room and began convincing me that the attacks that Brunhilde suffers are not strange, it's only somnambulism. She said that? And besides, she told me I wasn't to tell you because you keep it a secret. Miserable. Well, I'll show her. That isn't the best way, Senor Marquis. I think it better to use her own weapons this time. Secrecy. Don't tell her that we've been talking, sir. Otherwise, we'll lose. I only know that Count Frankenhausen is suffering from an hereditary sickness that is dreadful, Doctor. And my granddaughter cannot be cured yet. She has to wait for her father to find a cure and follow in his footsteps. And it is human blood that he needs. It's the only medicine. Just who told you such a monstrous thing? Hildegard did. My own servant revealed the terrible secret long ago. Count Frankenhausen is a vampire, and Brunhilde will be a vampire too. That is why I decided not to do anything at all to stop these ghastly crimes. What are you saying, sir? Yes, to save my granddaughter's life. I think I'd be capable of murder. But what Your Excellency hasn't been told is that blood is the food of the vampires, and that each new victim becomes a threat in himself. Why, in this way, your granddaughter, as well as Your Excellency, and the others are doomed, sir. In that case, was the whole thing a trick? It can't be true. 
I hate to say so, but it is. And I tolerated it all. But I can't begin again now. No, you can't begin again, sir, but you can help me to stop this thing. And I think that there's a way that I can save the girl, but only with your aid. Just save her, and you can have the solar state, Doctor. You can have all I possess. I told you that I might save her, but I can't assure you. The experiments that I explained to you are the object of my trip here. They're based upon a certain product that we call clamic acid. And what's more, the professor thinks that this is the only way that we can put a stop to this terrible plague. Now listen, if my friend Alejandro says so, then it's true. What are you waiting for, then? My granddaughter's right here. Why are we wasting so much time? I beg of you, Marquis, calm down. Try to calm down. It's more complicated than you imagine. And now it's worse. You see, someone opened my trunk and stole the instructions that my professor gave me to obtain this rare acid. Then they robbed you right here? In my own house? Who? Who knows? We might accuse Frau Hildegard. Frau? I see. It had to be her. Now I recall when she started to talk about a reward Yes, and... but it doesn't matter. There's nothing to worry about since I memorized the method of obtaining it. I'll return to the capital because I can only extract it in a laboratory. No, 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 no. You work right here in my house. You see, Count Frankenhausen used to dabble in alchemy here. And naturally, he had to install a fully equipped laboratory. She's coming around. Shh. Try to speak softly. Don't help her to awake. I'd like to recommend something that's very important. Anything you say. You should have faith in me, Senor Marquis. Don't reveal what we spoke about, and without asking why, follow instructions. I'll do it. You have my word. Ah. And don't let her know that I'm no doctor. <sighs> don't be afraid, Brunhilde. It's all right. This young man is a good friend of mine, dear. Allow me to introduce Dr. Ulysses Albaran. Doctor? Who was sick? You were, just for a while. But it's over and done with now. I was feeling badly. You, you could say that. Don't you recall anything? I don't understand. Your infirmity. You were very sick. Don't you recall a thing? Try to remember, Brunilda. The doctor's only trying to cure you. Was it a disease? Just what did I catch? That's what I'm trying to determine right now, young lady. You can help by remembering details. Now, please. Can't you tell us what happened? Have faith, dear, and speak out. I don't recall anything surprising. I only went to sleep, and just now I woke up. Are you totally sure? Don't be so skeptical, doctor. I don't make up stories. My dear, the doctor's only trying to investigate. That's all for now. I won't ask any more questions. And I assure your excellency that things are getting much clearer. Doctor, I see now that you were right. What do you suggest? I suggest that she lead a normal life, Marquise. She should get out in the sunlight in fresh air on horseback or on foot. The thing she prefers to do. I don't that think That is an can... order and don't forget. Try to get a little rest because dawn is coming on. Don't you think it's better to escape, Your Excellency? Certainly not, Hildegard. Don't you realize how I can use this terrible infirmity that the Count has diagnosed? At a future date? That is to say, if he can't detain it, I'll terminate this crusade and make all men vampires. Who could tolerate such a horror, Count? Don't show your stupidity, Hildegard. Can't you realize the triumph for the Frankenhausens? All humanity bowing to the power of our family. Those vampires in dormant state. They'll always be the serfs, the vampires made by their only master. He is the vampire who rules. 
And that reign is passed to my first child if I die. So no one can resist the Frankenhausen. They'll dominate humanity. So I must use this desperate measure because there's little time now. At least until I make the climic acid of the haunted hacienda. Is that a drug? A substance that I'll inject into their veins and the vampires die immediately without having to be burned. That's how we'll get rid of all these bloodsuckers, ending the vampire plague. The drug is something they can't resist. The only thing is, I need time to make many doses. Since there are plenty of monsters out there, I figure in about ten days we'll be ready. Clamic acid can only be found in mandragoras. In mandragoras? Yes, but the mandragora is not the usual plant. So they're very hard to find. And another thing, they don't have white flowers the way the others do. Their flowers are black. Down there near the lake, you'll find the mandragoras you want. Their flowers are black. Yes, I know about that. How'd you find out so fast? Why, you just got here. Well, I, I was sure about it, since mandragoras only grow when they are close to vampires. They must have started to bloom when Count Frankenhausen arrived in this region. That's right, Doctor. When the Count came here, the first flowers appeared. I was sure I'd find the species here. And I know the formula with which I can extract this essential acid, gentlemen. I'll use the roots. Another thing. Would you two go down there and help me to get the roots? Wholeheartedly. I'm not about to. But, Crescencio, you mean you're walking out now that I need you so much? Doctor, I don't want anything to do with dead bodies, spirits, or vampires. For other things, call on me when you want for any kind of work, sir. But for this sacrilege, as Father Victor has called it, you'd do better to find another assistant. Crescencio, you're deserting. Well, I guess you're right, Doctor. But I'm against trouble, so excuse me, please. Stay right where you are. I guess you'd prefer to have some monster get his fangs into you. No, you know I don't. Dear Lord, hear my plea or I'll die of fright. Don't let the vampires drink our blood tonight. Then no. sit down there and obey the doctor. The only thing I'll ask you to do is to cut and sharpen the stakes. Did you understand him? Try to avoid suspicion. Because otherwise the priest could ruin things like he did the other night. In that case, I don't have to go to the cemetery later to do the rest? Yes, because who else is going to help us work? No, no, let me repeat it, no! What an imbecile you are. Didn't you understand the things the doctor was telling us? But who would forget a thing like that? He said a vampire will die when you stick a stake in his heart. And he can't get out of his tomb then. Not always. There are times that a stake is all that's needed. But on other occasions, it won't work like that. Oh, no. That just makes things worse then. I'd hate to see one awaken when I start to put the stake in his heart. They can't move, I tell you. I guarantee they can't. They could attack a stake and all. Don't even say it. Anything like that would mean our complete destruction. The whole race would go under. I'd call it an invasion of vampires. I'm Bobby Gam Monster, internet horror host of Monster Movie Night, along with Boris T. Buzzard. And you're watching Monster Movie Night. <laughs> I'm a sinner, Father. I'm a sinner. Come on, come on, get up now. My soul is lost. My soul is lost. Oh, quiet down, man, quiet down. Obviously you sin, but not because you're bad, only because you're ignorant. Do you think a dead man can come to life when he wants to? And just because they drive a stake into his heart, he can't come back to life on Judgment Day? It's only that the doctor said... Yes, yes, I know what the little doctor said. But you mustn't repeat it, because then I'd really consider you a sinner. No one's going to know. I won't yes. tell a soul. Yes, these are only superstitions. Only superstitions, son. And you mustn't go on with this thing. You mustn't do as that sassy doctor orders you. No, I won't. I swear it. That's the truth, Father. I was so horribly scared that all my nervous system began to fail me. Watch this. <laughs> the dead won't return, so you must not fear, Crescencio. Rather, you should only fear men in their evil acts, because many are bad and ignorant. Yes, Father, I'll be careful to do that. But I tremble when I remember how I had to drive in those stakes. Well, forget all of what you saw up there last night or you'll tremble more. Did you know this town is full of stupid men? They're champions of stupidity, just class A morons. Thank you, Father. It's all right. If those idiots find out that the dead have returned, anything will happen. Just imagine the fights and riots and I won't be responsible. Understand? You're not to open your mouth about it. Just as you say, my jaws are closed. And at the right moment, I'll begin to say a few things and you'll see the people throw that sacrilegious doctor out of town.
Isn't this view nice? Marvelous, Doctor. I never imagined that down here at Dead Man's Lake the view was so magnificent. In that case, was the trip worthwhile? Obviously. It's only too bad I didn't come before this. You mean your father forbade it? It was confusing. But now that I see this wonderful view here, it's even more confusing. Why keep me in the house? I'd say that was because he adored you. He could have been afraid you'd get hurt in an accident. The way my mother died. Yes, that could have been the reason. My poor mama and my poor papa. He won't return, I guess. He must forget it. Thinking like that would just make you sad. Yes. What's the matter? Don't you hear? I don't hear a single thing. It's my name. I heard someone calling my name. It's right down there in the lake. Right there, close to the water. You still feel very weak. And you could possibly imagine that you hear things that aren't real. This is no hallucination, I can assure you. Strange ideas entered my mind the minute I arrived here. But now the waters are calling me in such an irresistible manner. Brunhilde, stop. She's making me go. I hear it clearly. It's the voice of my mother. Remember your mother's dead. No, it's her. Remember your mother can't summon you because your mother's dead. She's calling. She's calling. Wake up, Brunhilde. Wake up. Your mother's oh. buried in the cemetery in the marble tomb. I saw her. Then you've seen her. Buried there. Well, I... I've seen her tomb. I didn't see her body, but it was there. I wanted to. I didn't see her body after she died. I wasn't allowed. I wasn't allowed to. That's all in the past now. And you mustn't look back when tragedy is there. The future is yours, and it holds such fabulous things. Future generations will be <laughs> depending upon us. <laughs> Brunhilde, don't cry anymore. Do you hear me? Don't cry. Your tears make me very sad. Don't think I'm being rude when I say this, but, but I have to tell you. Listen, I don't want your gratitude for what I've been doing for you in these past few days here, because actually there's a good reason for it. I don't follow you. <laughs> I'll say no more right now. Later on, I'll find a way to tell you, and I think you'll understand me then. Until that day, I beg of you, have confidence in me. And accept a present to recall this moment. Something I want you to have. A crucifix. It was Mother's. Uh, I mustn't accept uh, it. Please do accept it, Brunhilde. Just wear it, and I promise that you'll get well sooner than you think. But I, I might lose it. <laughs> God's will, don't you think? In that case, won't you fasten it, please? Well, then, I think we'd better get to work now. Didn't you come down here to see the lagoon? No, we came to pick Mandragoras. Are you making fun of me? Not in the slightest. I'm completely serious. For this new experiment I'm working on, I'll need certain roots of Mandragoras. I've been told they're here on the shore. It's too bad I wasn't told, because I've seen lots in a place close to the house. There you could have picked all you wanted. The kind I need only grow in the lake. They are a strange species. They have black roots instead of white, and the flowers are also black. Now, who would imagine you'd find Mandragoras of this color growing so close to my estate? Another favor, Your Excellency. Please authorize me to use these facilities whenever I think it necessary. The laboratory is yours. Here's the key, young man. Use it. It's the only one in existence, since the other one was lost with Count Frankenhausen. Let's hope that my memory doesn't fail me, and I can call to mind the complete process for extracting clamic acid. At any rate, I'm extremely grateful, Senor Marquis. <laughs> I'm the one who should be grateful, young man, for your interest. It's terribly easy to be interested when such a lovely girl as your granddaughter is involved in the situation. <laughs> Forgive me, but I must insist upon repeating what I told you about her before. She doesn't know the slightest thing about her father's way of life, nor the terrible destiny that awaits her if you should be so unfortunate as to fail. 
I'll say it again, Your Excellency. She'll not hear a word about his condition from me. Try not to worry. Today I gave her a present that's going to help to a certain extent. A crucifix. Good morning, Doctor. Well, hello there. And to what do I owe the visit? It's something disagreeable. I seem to have lost the crucifix that you gave me yesterday. How is it lost? It seems we're involved in a mysterious thing because I admit I tend to lose crucifixes here. Last night when I retired, I had it on, and this morning I couldn't find it. I see. They stole it while you slept then. Impossible. I was very cautious. Used a double lock on my door. That's a strange thing. Very strange thing. Why is it? Someone robbed me the same as you. Last night they took the mandragoras. Tell me, was the door really locked when you left? Yes, I remember to lock it. And I have the only key right here. Well, then someone has made new keys. That's quite clear. And the thief that took the crucifix and carried off the mandragoras last night must be very scared. And one thing is sure, Brunhilde, this person is planning to stop me in my experiments. He's planning to strike. I must discover who it is. Tell me, do you have faith in me? You know that I do. In that case, will you help me in this? What is it that I'm to do? Can you tell me that? I accompany the doctor this afternoon. No, I'm not a good guesser. To the shores of Dead Man's Lake. To that place? Don't you know that I'm strongly opposed to your going there? Oh, hi, Senor Marquis. Is there anything wrong in her going there? Wrong? No, doctor. I simply mean that the place is uninviting. Why must the girl be exposed to more danger? I worry because it's not safe there. But, Grandpa, darling, the lagoon is the most beautiful sight I know. You know so few places around here. Please, I apologize. The whole thing is my fault. It's really not important, Doctor. But I prefer that you didn't take her there again. Then we won't return, sir. She helped me so much that in an hour we gathered all the mandragoras I need. It's true, Grandfather. I picked a large quantity of mandragoras. I made a small map so that we won't forget where we hid them. You'd better take it, Brunhilde. I'd be glad to, Doctor. <laughs> a map to show where you hid flowers? Yes, Grandfather, like the ones used by pirates when they hide their treasure. You might think we're a little childish, Senor Marquis. But the map that I made is more important than any treasure that the pirates buried. <laughs> in suspecting that you stole the mandragoras and the crucifix, too. I should have realized there were secret passageways in an old building like this. No wonder it did no good to lock our doors at night. So you're the person who did it all. 
Frau Hildegard, the servant in charge of managing the house. So you're the person who tried to kill me, the only daughter of your master, Count Frankenhausen. And I'll continue to do so. What will you gain? My only object is the Count. My master is he who commands me. I just don't follow you. Let your friend here explain the whole story. He has information you'd like to hear, Brunhilde. Don't listen to her. The woman's completely mad, you know. Madness, you call it. Well, I don't care what others might think or do. I shall continue to follow and assist Count Frankenhausen. Say it again. Didn't I hear you say it help, Papa? In that case, you know where he is now. Then you really know where he's at. Don't listen to her. She's insane. Her mind's completely gone. But this girl is about to hear the whole story now. You shut up. Or you're going to be sorry. Stupid moron, you can keep your threat. She must hear. Brunhilde suspects her. She must be told the whole story about her father. <laughs> Why did you do that to her? I had to do it. I won't explain it to you right now. And why can't you explain what's going on? You're always holding something back. Do you think that I'm still a child? No, you're not a child. But this isn't completely in my hands. I'm not permitting that hag to spoil things. But I have a right to know what happened to my father. No one can prohibit that. Yes, the Marquise can. Brunilda! Brunilda! Open up, child! Open the door! Oh, grandfather. What's going on here? She started to tell Brunhilde something about her father. That's why I struck her. Doctor, I want more facts. But if it's as you say it is, then you were perfectly right. But I have a right to know. I want to know. And you will know, darling. You will know. Hildegard was beginning to be too impertinent, and someone had to silence her. For the time being, I think I'll lock her up so she can't get away. You, better you. give the doctor a hand with her. Here, here, give me that. I owe the candles. And you, darling, you stay here and try to get a little rest. Tomorrow we'll talk about it. Follow me. Hmm. Dusting, you know, it uh, reminds me of an old poem that I, that I heard years and ages ago. See how it goes. You are dust, and you will turn to dust. That's why I do not dust. It might be someone I know. <laughs> This place needs about another bucket of dust, I believe. <laughs> and some more cobwebs, too.
me. I can get along perfectly without you. You're bobbing around worse than a ship in a storm, Don Efren. Let me go. Come on. Come on. Please come on, Don Efren. No. Here they come. Here they come. They've gotten out of their tombs. They've gotten out of their tombs. Who got out of their tombs? Yes, the vampires did. You must be drunk. No, they're coming towards us this morning. I'm warning the whole town. The priest has to know. Those beasts will murder us. The vampires are out. The vampire. Uh. Come on, Don Efren. Who's that idiot that shouts so much? Didn't you hear? The vampires are out. The vampires? They're coming towards town to murder us. Vampires? That's just hogwash. Please hurry or they'll catch us. And then they'll want my blood. And then my face will turn pale and I'll look ugly. Crescencio, you're just an ignorant... Fool, you retarded. Well, please hurry. That man isn't lying. Where are the vampires then? They'll be here in just a moment. Oh, you idiot. There are no vampires. The rumors. That's well, all. I don't know, but I'm plenty scared. I'm going to warn the alcalde now. The vampires are out. The vampires are out. You're an out. idiot. You're retarded. Those rumors don't exist. <laughs> Yes, yes, I think something serious is afoot of the bells are ringing at this hour. Grandfather, what's the matter? I don't know. I really don't. Those are the alarm bells. Something's happened. Yes, yes, I hear it too, but I really don't know what's going on. Could be that it's a fire. Possibly, my dear. Who knows? Since these storms at times bring lightning, and that must have begun a tremendous fire. But then you shouldn't worry. Just forget it and try to rest. I'll send someone into town to find out what it's all about. You'd all better stay in the house. What happened to you? You're bleeding. What is it? It's nothing, nothing at all. Why did you say that we should stay? Because I know what's troubling the people. They're not ringing for volunteers to put out any sudden forest fire. Those bells mean they should prepare their defenses. Defenses? Yes. Another thing we should start preparing. We'll need all the help we can get. I could use about 30 more hands. You see, there isn't much time now. Come here, doctor. Now listen, do you suppose that... It's no supposition, Marquis. It's a certainty. But I understood you to say that only when he's dead with those others... Mm. Uh... It's happened, sir. Tell me about it, please. Well, just now, we fought and I was forced to kill him. I'm sorry. What's this all about? Won't you please tell me, explain this business? What's this about defenses? Who is it that makes us need defenses? Brunhilde, I think it's time that we informed you. This is the correct moment, and you should be told. Wait, don't open up. It might be dangerous. Uh, I'll open it. Open up! Open up! It's Mika Sentio, the Alcalde! They're coming! They're coming! Save yourselves any way you can! What happened to you, Doctor? Nothing. I'll explain later. And all the townspeople saw refuge in the church. But Don Efren stayed out in the street, shouting insults at us, calling us idiots and cowards, and lots of other things. We came running to warn you that they're approaching the hacienda. And now that you know that, we'll run further. Listen, you'd better stay right here. You can't flee from those creatures. They're going to get us. They're going to get us. No, they won't get us. The bell warned us also. When you two arrived, we were preparing a method of defense. Then you already knew. The doctor's well informed about the situation. There's a reason. How will we defend ourselves? There's an effective method. We can hang mandragora roots in the doors and windows. They can't get close to it. Impossible. Dead Man's Lake is two miles away. They'll get here soon. You don't understand. I have mandragoras here. Look, tell me more about it. You can tell me in more detail later on tonight. Now, just what is it that you have all been talking about? Who is approaching the house? The vampires, young lady. Is all hung out. All we can do now is wait. You told her? Just now. Only I admitted that you fought and killed Count Frankenhausen. She's too heartbroken. Poor child. 
hates to recognize the truth. I'll complete the information later. First, I'm going to talk to her. <laughs> now stop crying. Try to calm down. It's horrible. Just horrible. <laughs> Only it's useless to cry. Now you'll be able to understand. And let me repeat this. You should have faith in me. I can save you. I'll try. child. You don't want to see such a gruesome sight. I don't think you could bear it. That's not important. He's my father. So take me there, I beg of you. No, not right now. It's much better to wait until we bring Count Frankenhausen to his natural state again. You'll see your father's body when his body is normal. Right now, he's nothing more than a vampire, but dead. No! 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 Nothing but lies! You're a liar! Count Frankenhausen cannot be dead! He'll never die because he cannot be killed! Shut up, Frau Hildegard! Lies, filthy lies! Soon Count Frankenhausen will be master of the world! When he transforms us into vampires, he said he could do it! He'll rule the whole world! There's no way to kill him! Hold your tongue, Hildegard. Don't show more stupidity. The Count's dead, we know! No! No, stop lying! The master can't be dead! No one can kill him, you stupid fools, because he has an immortal soul! Count Frankenhausen has been killed! I know because I did it. <laughs> he wanted to kill me, suck my blood. But he won't hurt you now. I tried to explain it, but you can't understand the danger we're in while those awful monsters still wait outside. There are other things that you must be told. I didn't want to show you this tragic spectacle, but obviously there's no other way. So come along.
It's Don Efron. The man's dead. He had enough liquor in him last night to kill a hundred men. His death was not due to alcohol. He was killed last night by a vampire. Because he rejected the Lord, preferring to stay in the street instead of taking refuge in God's house last night. Oh, dear God, have mercy on this man. Amen. Amen. Father, we came down here to ask for your help. And just what can I do for you? I know a way which may detain the vampires. So I came to ask you to gather together all the townspeople for a meeting. Hmm, yes. Well, now, son, you must understand that I must be very cautious. Since you always propose methods that are, well, let's say, sacrilegious, let's hear it then, this idea. Just a second. He was old and pig-headed. That's why he's lying there. Hmm. I guess he wins. I'll call a meeting. No, darling, you mustn't. You shouldn't worry now. Count Frankenhausen is no longer a vampire. He's an inoffensive cadaver, harmless like all others. 
The same as that group of vampires when I fill their veins and they return to normal. And my granddaughter, is she going to get well? I can assure you, Senor Marquis, the climic acid is the thing that will cure your granddaughter. Since the malediction will disappear forever and that's freedom for the Frankenhausens. that you're dead, Count Frankenhausen. Say goodbye to Don Efren. Here lie Count and Countess Frankenhausen and Frau Hildegard, their faithful servant who would not abandon them even when they journeyed to the great beyond. Oh, my, what an ending, eh, Boris? <laughs> Those vampires, huh? Count Frankenhausen. Ah, what a name. Well, a wonderful name to be exact, but to, to be destroyed like that and then all your minions come back and seek their revenge. <laughs> that was so creepy, wasn't it, Boris? Creepy, wonderfully creepy and spooky and scary. Ah, will we have nightmares? I most certainly hope so. Don't you, Boris? <laughs> What about you, my dear vampire, huh? Were well, you scared stiff? I think she is. <laughs> Bad joke? Ah, my, my, my. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's feature, Invasion of the Vampires, and hope that you learned a little bit more about my quarter uh, kin of being a quarter vampire, that is. <laughs> of course, quarter witch, quarter ghoul, and a quarter werewolf, as well as vampire, makes me 100% pure monster. <laughs> and you know what that means, hmm? That means I may be easygoing, laid back until the moon rises, until the urge for blood seeps through my veins, until I take a moment and feel a hunger for the dead. Right, Boris? <laughs> and when I decide to do all that, I can cast a spell to you all, only to come and watch Monster Movie Night. <laughs> right, Boris? Exactly. Anyway, thank you for visiting us here and enjoying this week's episode. <laughs> we hope that you'll come back for the next episode again and again and again. Well, until that time, my dear fiends, <laughs> keep screaming. <laughs> <laughs>